So um, I want you to imagine that you're stuck in traffic on the highway, and you discover to your right a special brand new car lane just for, let's say, BMWs that pass you with high speed. And at all because BMW or whatever car brand you would like it to be has a deal with the private owner of that highway. And this scenario could likely happen in the next years because state governments in the United States are already leasing roads to private individuals and companies for the right to claim tolls. Take the Chicago Skyway as an example. And with the cuts in budgets that those states have to make, it won't take long until we see completely privately owned highways. But you would consider that to be unfair, right? Why do they get to reach their destination faster while you have to wait in traffic? Well, that is pretty much what happens to the internet right now. And like, you don't want anybody to have that special car lane just for them because of who they are or what they drive. There's also the concept of net neutrality when it comes to the internet, which is the idea that internet providers like AT&T or Verizon should carry all the traffic on the internet without favoring or discriminating against certain products, websites, and services. Just that it's not cars in this case, but data. What does that mean? Well, it means that every website on the internet should be equally accessible to you being it a large fast food franchise or your friend's cooking block, with the only exception that large companies are usually able to afford more servers, which results in a better website performance. But on the way to your device, the data is treated equally. So what happens if that's not the case? Well, in our car scenario, BMW would be able to charge high prices, right, because of the advantage that their drivers have. And it also wouldn't matter if another car manufacturer had the better product, the better fuel economy, or more horsepower, making it harder for smaller companies that don't have the money to make those deals in the first place to stay competitive. Again, it is similar with the internet. Without net neutrality rules, providers are free to discriminate against certain services. And there's a variety of uses for that. Take Comcast as an example, a company that provides you with internet access but also happens to have their own streaming service. Nothing prevents them right now from slowing down or completely blocking similar services in their network, which obviously would make their customers more likely to use their own product. Another use would be to establish certain premium services, like the telecom, and Germany has already done it and others want to do it, which basically means that those providers make a deal with large companies, in case of the telecom Spotify, and either exclude them from your monthly data volume or speed them up in comparison to their competitors. Again, all things that make them more likely to be used by the customers of that particular provider. And you can imagine that this would such companies be worth a lot of money. And in the end, they will have the customers pay their share too. For example, with package deals, like we see them on pay TV right now, where you will pay to access certain websites and services. And this is not only bad for smaller companies or new startups that don't have a chance, no matter how good their products or ideas are, but in the end, it's also bad for you. It's bad for the customer that doesn't get those best products and services, but hardly any innovation or improvement all paired with high prices. And these things aren't just ideas in the heads of some managers, but are actually possible right now, thanks to a federal appeal court ruling in January in which the DC Circuit Court decided that the Federal Communications Commission, or short FCC, which is the governmental organization responsible for regulating communication in the United States, does not have the authority to enforce its net neutrality rules that were written in 2010. Just back in February, the FCC announced that it won't appeal that decision, but instead rewrite those rules. But that's only a partial, partial solution, because those new rules will be again and again exposed to lawsuits. So 
what options do we have? Well, one idea that comes to mind would be to prevent anybody from altering the data flow on the internet. But we like being protected against viruses. We want filtered and organized search results, although those are often based on what large companies like Google know about us. But those exceptions make actual laws complicated to make, perhaps too complicated for most politicians, especially if you consider in which fields those people worked before and have experience in. Not saying that there aren't any exceptions. Al Franken, U.S. Senator for Minnesota, is one of the greatest proponents of net neutrality. But we have seen several net neutrality proposals being killed in several Congresses over the last few years. And there's no reason why this should change anytime soon. So what we're left here with are basically two different scenarios. For one, we could do nothing and have the internet being controlled by large companies and providers that aren't prevented from altering the data flow and won't hesitate to do so because they're bottom line oriented, which is bad for us as the customers, as well as new startups, but also innovation in general. Or we could have the government step in and regulate. But do we want that to happen? Because whether you agree with government surveillance in its current state or not, mass spying without a previous suspicion or a court ruling is likely to increase even more if the internet is controlled and regulated by the government and its agencies. And this does not just affect foreign countries. So neither of those two scenarios sounds good. What is there that comes closest to a solution? Ten days ago, on March 12, the World Wide Web had its 25th anniversary, and its inventor, Tim Berners-Lee, urged in an interview with The Guardian for the internet to stay open and neutral. His idea is engaging people to create what he calls a bill of rights for the internet that then each particular government is supposed to follow. But whether this will work out or not, he brought up a good point there, because Net neutrality really is an important factor when it comes to the issue of net, sorry, public awareness really is an important factor when it comes to the issue of net neutrality. For example, in 2012, when AT&T blocked Apple's FaceTime service over their cellular network. In that case, pressure from independent organizations and individuals made them quickly reverse their decision. If customers have options in a competitive provider market and therefore can and do put pressure on their providers by switching them or even challenging them in court, we can keep the compromise between too much government control and too powerful provider companies and maintain the internet as a place of innovation, economic growth, and equal opportunities. All things that made its huge success and development only possible in the first place. So the next time you're driving your car or using the internet, and according to the numbers, you're likely to do both, ask yourself if you think that private companies should be able to prioritize certain traffic, slow others down, and put an end to a competitive market. Because if you don't, net neutrality is something you should care about. Thank you.